Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a second reading for the collective, two days in a row, completely unprecedented. I've never done two back-to-back -back collective readings. Yesterday's message was, it felt like a big one to me. I actually had a lot of anxiety around it. It's interesting because I hadn't noticed until yesterday that the anxiety that I used to get in doing these readings has completely subsided. Like I think I'm in my third year now of doing this channel. For probably the first two years or more, I would have, oh, it's almost like stage fright, just like an, a mild um, anxiety in my core. Uh, right up until I hit record actually, and then it generally subsides, but all throughout the day until I'm actually seated and recording, there's anxiety there, right? And I used to mention it a lot because because I, I was like, well, you know, does this ever pass? Do we ever get past the phase where we're nervous to speak in a sense? So I'm only realizing now that that's subsided. It's amazing how we don't notice something dissolve or move away. We, we don't notice the absence of something sometimes. So anyway, yesterday I started getting nervous again about the reading. And in fact, I had a, a bit of a challenge um, reading the comments because I expected a big backlash for some reason from that reading, but it seems like it's being um, accepted very well. People are resonating with it or, um, you know, finding value in it. So that's good. So I come into today thinking, okay, back onto the signs. I'm going to do Capricorn. I'm going to just go into the Capricorn reading. I'm going to just deliver a message that's, that's very every day, right? And then this message comes out and it's a it's clearly a more, more collective reading. So here we are doing collective, collective 2.0, however you want to look at it. So I'm doing this message today again with the shamanic decks. Maybe that's the reason I should have chosen another set of decks. I might not have gotten such a big message. Um, I'm doing the, the uh, Mystical Shaman and the Shaman's Dream Oracle blended together in one stack. So you'll see a mix of both in your spread today. So we've got the Seer on the split. And the Serpent at the bottom of the deck. The Seer of the Serpent, maybe. Is that what we're talking about here? The Seer of the Serpent. Um, the serpent is kind of coming through as, as um, kind of a Kundalini rising type of an energy. And the seer, I want to say, has seen this coming. The seer has seen this coming. The seer knows about the rising energy. The movement that has begun has been anticipated by the seer. Okay. Um, let's pull an overall energy from the creativity oracle, the creativity oracle. Actually, it's, it's, it's changing. It's correcting itself a little bit. There's a lot going on in this scene. There's all this kind of like, you can see this, I think it's a cougar down here. There's a bird up here. Is that a dragonfly? No, it isn't, but it's flashing dragonfly at me. So there's a lot going on. This is almost like um, a psychic or something. Maybe, maybe this is me in a sense, because this one here is kind of able to perceive subtle energies, right? There's kind of all these subtleties around. That's their gift. That's their ability is to kind of read the subtle realm. But suddenly there's something like almost much more obvious going on that's even got the seer stopped in their tracks and witnessing this kind of uh, a more tangible phenomenon being witnessed, something like that, which totally fits in and makes sense to what's already on the table here. But okay, let's pull an overall energy. Let's pull an overall energy. Free associate. Okay, I feel like that's guidance to me. It's interesting how these beginning cards are almost talking to me. I think maybe because it's because I just expressed an anxiety or a nervousness here. So it says free associate. Um, I'm hearing like trust your alignments, trust your instinct, like move with move with your instinct into alignments that 
Of course, free associate is talking about like the card says, allow the first thing that comes into your mind to be spoken without censorship. This is totally a message to me. Be in the moment, say what comes to your mind. That's absolutely what I do, but I feel like it's encouraging me even more. Maybe stuff's gonna come up that I'm gonna be reluctant to speak because it could be strange. So, okay, and I'll show you the image. So I'm seeing those drafts at the top, right? And I'm thinking about the, there's something about their movement and they're kind of gracious and delicate and elegant as they move. So the movement is an elegant movement and it's almost like it kind of comes together. It's like, it's almost like the drafts kind of come together in this, in this elegant flow state and, and move forward kind of as a pack in a sense. And it's talking about to trust, to trust the, the movements that are putting you in alignment with, with others, something like that. So, okay, we're beginning the reading here with this fascinating card. So it's called Perfect Storm, the courage to step into life. So I've sat and looked at this card a number of times. I don't think it's ever been in a reading up until now, but it comes up when I'm shuffling cards and I, I spend time with it and it's never really spoken to me until today. It started speaking yesterday, but it came forward today with its message. I noticed yesterday that this it's a crow or a raven, but it's actually got like these peacock feathers down its back, right? So that was really fascinating to me. Why is this crow, why is this black bird um, draped in peacock feathers? And then the sorcerer came out and that's where it really emerged for me. It's interesting that the seer, it's interesting that this happened on the split there, that the seer is witnessing the serpent rising. Um, okay, what this is talking about is, it's kind of like something in disguise. There's an energy or an individual or a group that is in disguise, kind of hiding under the peacock energy. I see the raven or the crow as absolute truth, like higher order reality, right? It is, it is... Uh, what I, what's coming forward is unchallenged. It is unchallengeable perhaps, but it's hiding under the peacock energy. So it's almost like it's pretending to be, um, more shallow or it's almost like somebody who has incredible knowledge, but is acting like there's somebody who will ask questions that they already know the answers to. Do you know what I mean? Asking questions, asking a question they already know the answer to is kind of um, leading people astray to believe that they don't know, that they don't hold the knowledge, but they actually do. It's something in that realm. You see what I'm saying? And with the sorcerer here, kind of like locked into that energy, there is somebody or there is part of the collective, the sorcerer, maybe it's like the seer, perhaps that is aware of this dynamic, that there is something kind of under the surface. It's actually quite profound. I wanna say a beneficial, really powerful energy. And for some reason it's pretending it's not. It's like it's like people, somebody pretending that they're stupid, right? It's like that somebody pretending, pretending that they're really shallow and vain when they're actually incredibly um, wise and full of integrity. You see what I'm saying? So why that would be happening I don't know, but I'm just telling you what, what is showing itself in the card. But it's interesting, it's interesting here though how it says the courage to step into life because it feels like this is this has been the case, but I feel like it's about to show itself now. So it's like it's having the courage to step forward to make itself known, which is fascinating because there's been all this stuff about the trees and then the root girl comes up next, the disowned self. It's not about the disowned self. Well, maybe it's about some aspect of self or some aspect of an identity that has been submerged with the roots into the in underneath, right? It's it's buried. So there's been this thing about the trees, about that there's been this silent presence on the planet, or there's this silent presence amongst us in our lives that is very much. Um, kind of a part of the scenery. It's very much in our awareness. Like there could be active engagement with this energy, but it's not speaking what it knows. You see what I'm saying? And then, so that tree energy, as it's been presenting itself over the last month or two, it kind of shows itself sometimes as it could almost be something like 
nature having an ability to actually communicate or engage or express in a way that it hasn't. It could also be some sort of a life form that has kind of disguised itself, like uh, extraterrestrial life perhaps kind of blending into the, to the scene and not making itself stand out, right? A camouflaging energy. Or it could be even kind of like the light workers in a sense, kind of hiding their light or yet to express their full abilities. It could be all of those things but today it's presenting a little bit differently. I want to say it's almost like none of those things exactly, or maybe it's a combination of all of them, but whatever it is, it's like, it's, it's, well, especially with the serpent, with the serpent energy, the serpent rising, it's like it's on its way up and out in a sense. This came through to an extended the other day about the the uh it was like i think it was the exit strategy reading about lifting up and out and as you pull up the roots as you as you rise up the roots are exposed so anyway okay dragonfly the beauty way coming out beside the root girl was talking to me about that it's like this dragonfly is going directly vertical here and it's bringing up this energy with it this is also talking about a collective it's a collaboration it's kind of like uh, it started showing itself to me a few years ago, kind of at the beginning of my channel, where it looked like this dragonfly was this massive, kind of this ornamental display that was so massive that it had to be kind of hoisted up on a crane, right? Like it was this huge sculpture, which is fascinating because that was in another reading the other day too, about some, like an unveiling of a sculpture. But the unveiling of the sculpture or the, like the artwork or the creation, the collaboration that has been this massive project, um, the unveiling of this massive project isn't, it's not the, the dragonfly sculpture or the display itself it has something to do with, it's almost like that, that being displayed is the beginning of the process of exposing the roots. It's interesting how this is all blending together and almost becoming this giant tree. It's like the dragonfly is pulling the tree out by its roots. Um, so basically what I'm trying to say is the, the unveiling of the dragonfly co collaboration or project. It's like the artwork is complete and it's now going to be displayed, which is, fascinating because it means it's like that phase is, is complete. I'm always talking about how once the artwork is displayed in the gallery, it's like that, 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 that there's no more life in that. So it's not that, it's not this, it's not the display. That part is almost like a spent energy that it's the end of a process and the beginning of another. And it's actually the, the roots coming up. That is the next phase. If that makes sense. So it's almost like when the when this show occurs, when this dragonfly sculpture, this is maybe that's what this is. Okay. Maybe that's what this shallow or surface thing is. It's like because the dragonfly, it's because it's like it's almost like a show, right? Maybe it's like a big rock concert, something like that, where it's and it's presented as entertainment, right? Or creativity and entertainment, artwork, something fascinating to engage within. But it's really kind of what's underneath it or what's what's emerging because it is now completed that is the real information or the real show or the real truth. It's like the dragonfly which is just the lead in or the introduction, it's something like that. Okay, so, and then the crow and the owl. So this is really incredible, right? Like look at these energies here with these two birds kind of bookending all of this energy here. These are really powerful cards today, right? They have a real, a real energy and presence to them. These two crows to get, I mean, it's, the, it's one, but it's, you see what I'm saying? Okay. So it's the same energy presenting again. It's something like this in this card, it is blended and kind of disguised or camouflaged or acting uh, unawares. And then here is where it, it makes itself seen. It's like, it's almost like it's hiding behind something interesting. Cause there's been all this eclipsing talk in the readings. It's kind of like it's hiding behind the owl or the peacock and it's about to emerge and show itself. So it's almost like it's blended in. It's like, it's acting like it's part of the owl energy 
whatever the owl might be, the owl is generally seen as a wise energy, right? Which is fascinating because this is presenting as unwise. It's not that it's unwise, it's just not on target somehow. Um, but the owl also comes up with a lot of tricky energy about the owl is, I'm not going to get into that right now, but it's basically talking about the, it's like the disguise being the surface being cast off, right? The owl is basically just to sum it up really quick, quickly. It's an energy that is almost kind of taken for granted as what it is. It's accepted for the symbol that it, it has been assigned. It's been assigned characteristics and it's been accepted as that. But if you actually engage closer with it, it's not completely true. The stuff that it's, this, the characteristics that are assigned to this symbol are not completely true. There's a lot more to the story and it can, it can be a challenging energy to penetrate once you realize that. But is that, is that applicable here? I'm not sure. The point is that the crow is revealing itself and I guess maybe that's part of this dragonfly kind of being hoisted up for all to see. Okay, so, and then again, Will of the Wisp, treasures hidden in the shadows, right? So again, it keeps talking about that there's something that has been hidden. There's a wisdom that has, there's a truth or a wisdom. That's what the owl talks about too, right? Truth and wisdom, maybe. But something about it is it's uncomfortable. That's basically what the owl brings in here is that it's uncomfortable. Not that the truth is uncomfortable, but something about the disguise, like the fact that this wasn't perceived. It was perceived by some, right? With the sorcerer, the ones who have, maybe it's these guys, the seers, the ones that have the ability to perceive beyond the surface or beyond the obvious or the ordinary they have been able to see or maybe even more of a darker energy the sorcerer i generally see as like a dark magician type of energy it's like the dark magician energy has known that this is that this is the case they've seen it they've had their eyes on it but generally most don't some do but most don't haven't had no idea that the that this energy was a, dis, a something in disguise because that's the thing it's like it's there already like the trees everybody is surrounded by trees this energy is surrounding us but we take it for granted right just just like i was saying about the owl you just take for granted or accept the tree as a tree you're accepting this energy whoever or whatever it is you're taking it on face value, right? And so it's not that what they are exposing or the, or them kind of stepping out of the shadows, they're a treasure. It's a treasure stepping forward, right? So it's a beneficial energy. It's a supportive energy, perhaps. It's a, it's a wanted element in the end, but it's the unveiling that is uncomfortable. Do you see what I'm talking about? So the fact that there was anything hidden at all is the discomfort because you have to come to terms with the fact this is that radical acceptance energy perhaps that there that there was something that you didn't know especially for us ones who can see who have the ability to see so it may be really a surprise to even the ones who can see that there's something that they haven't seen yet okay so stepping sorry, there was the stepping into life and the hidden in the shadows and the rainmaker energy. The rainmaker, I want to say, is this energy kind of stepping forward and displaying itself in some way. It almost looks like there's a, sh there's a show. It's like not only is it kind of revealing, just taking off the surface um, facade, the disguise, whatever that is, the mask, it's coming out here with the sun. The mask is coming off but also some they're doing something it's like some kind of a display with the rainmaker it's like they're making something happen they're creating something or doing something that with the witness card is being witnessed by all okay but the witness is is also kind of blending in all of this energy about that it's 
there could be a bit of a defensiveness, right? Like the hands are up. There's a bit of like stepping back from this energy. And I want to say that it's, again, it's not because of what is being brought forward. It's the fact that it was, it's unexpected. Nobody saw it coming that there was something so well disguised right out in the open. It's something like that with the tree energy, right? Like it's not that it's not that something that we love is exposing something that we don't love. Basically, what I'm trying to say is like, is that we all love the trees, right? And so, if the trees, if the tree is a disguise, you would assume that that meant the aspect of the tree that we love is no longer applicable because it was hiding something. But it's not. It's not that. It's just the fact that it's this unexpected because it seems like it's big. It's a big deal. It's, it's almost like it's got everybody focused on it with the witness card, including this is the thing, including all of us as a collective, we're the witness energy here. We're going to be stopped in our tracks in a sense, just like this. So this is what I was saying about even the ones who can see are going to be stopped in their tracks and all turn towards this, this unveiling or unmasking, unmasking of the sun energy. That's the fascinating thing. So there could be, there could be a lot of this, like, how did we not see this before? How did we not see that the sun was masked somehow, right? There's that eclipse energy again. How did we not realize there was some sort of an eclipsing energy there? This sun card has always been fascinating to me because like here's the moon here, right? And so I think maybe this is the sun here, but like what is going, there's some sort of a ceremony or a ritual going on here with this character that's actually almost blocking out our view of the sun, right? And it's a very strange energy because it comes through as a bit of a mask, right? It's like there's, is that uh, um, an animated, an actual face? Or is that, is that like a, you see what I'm saying? It's like, there's no life. There's no life in those eyes. It's a mask, right? So there's something about that, that the mask is coming down. And so there's discomfort in that regard because it's it's that like, what exactly, what exactly was it? Why didn't we perceive this? What exactly is it that we're engaged with? There's a moment of stepping back with uncertainty about what does this mean exactly, right? And then... Straddling worlds, wandering between realms. Okay, so what this was talking about, it's talking about a few things, but. It's interesting because I'm talking about this, about this card is like there's some sort of, okay. Okay, there's something about they've been there's been a a, a a disguise in a sense it's not that it's a disguise that's the thing it's not even like it's hidden or wearing a mask it's that it's just not showing all of its cards in a sense right it's just kind of staying on the surface it's like it's fully visible it's a fully visible energy entity person phenomenon event circumstance whatever it is it's fully out in the open and visible. It's not really disguised in any way. It's right there in the open. It's just that either the full context was not explained to us or it just hasn't said everything that it knows. It pretends that it doesn't know, right? By asking questions, which makes it appear ignorant. Does that make sense, right? It's kind of throwing you off the trail to, it's almost like it's though it's been asking for guidance. It's been seeking out counsel. It's been going to psychics or you see what I mean? It's, it's asking for guidance as if it doesn't already know. You see what I'm saying? So, but with this, with these two energies here, first of all, the mask coming off, like I said, it's not, it's not really a mask. It's just, it's true expanse being displayed is going to be startling because it's like everybody just doesn't give it much thought, doesn't give these ones or this one much thought because they're kind of just suspected as 
They're just not taken seriously. Something like that. I keep getting like Legally Blonde. You know that movie Legally Blonde? I can't really remember it, but I know it's like she's a lawyer and because she's blonde, it's like she kind of, you know, everybody just takes her as like not really being that intelligent, which is really horrible, right? But she's like, she's playing it up. That's part of her thing is so that she doesn't, so that they take her for granted and then she can kind of get in there and really do her thing, right? By like at the last moment, exposing that she's actually probably the smartest person in the room. You see what I'm talking about, right? So, but then there's this other aspect here, which I guess it's like this, this show, the fact that it's gonna be a real display, that there's some sort of a show that is going to happen, especially with the hoisting up of the dragonfly, the crane lifting the dragonfly. It's almost like it's going to become center stage. It's, om it's kind of like it's becoming the eclipsing energy here, right? It's, the, it's because there's stuff going on, the sun is in the background, there's stuff happening, there's stuff happening and it's almost like this energy is stepping in front of it and, and getting right up in the camera and blocking out all of the other stuff that has been happening or is happening at the time that this occurs. They're interjecting and, and that's the thing. They've been so kind of unassuming and suddenly they're kind of the main event, right? It's almost like, it's almost like they're blocking out the sun right? Getting right up in the camera. And it's kind of showing here too. It's like the, it's blocking, it's blocking the landscape. It's up front and close for all of us, kind of like right in our face. And then with the unmarked trail revelation, again, I think it's in like the exact same position as yesterday's reading. It's talking about whatever this is, it's front and center. It's filling the entire frame, which basically is like the whole collective consciousness is absorbed in this unveiling in a sense. Um, but it's also on an unmarked trail. This is like, it's never happened before. This has never occurred before. It's a completely unexplored terrain, right? In the straddling worlds, wandering between realms is kind of bringing in this idea that whatever it is that they're doing, say they're performing in some regard because they get this kind of rock concert kind of vibe, right? It's like they're doing, there's some kind of a show, a revelation. They're showing what they know or who they are fully. And in that, it's almost like, that could be part of what this kind of stepping back is, is that it's like something that we've not quite perceived before where, what am I trying to say? straddling worlds it's kind of like they are displaying an ability or a knowledge that seems otherworldly in a sense it's like how are they doing that how are they doing that okay and then suddenly i'm completely stopped in my tracks as i'm hearing myself say those words and i'm thinking of all of the descriptions that we've ever heard of the Antichrist. And I feel like that could be kind of what goes through the mind of the collective. It's almost like something is going to present itself where many of us will be asking because there's some sort of otherworldly miraculous display that will be questioned by us is this is this is this the trickster energy we've been forewarned that they will display miraculous abilities but then you also have to think about it's kind of like this card right it's like you got to kind of turn it in all different directions and figure out which way is up because a lot of this, just like the coyote energy in yesterday's reading, a lot of what has been embedded in our culture, in our texts, in our everything, a lot of it has truth at its core, but it's been flipped upside down, right? So you, it's an incredible discernment. And the rattle is coming up at the end here. My heart is racing right now because this is a big big energy. I feel like there's a lot of pressure on me delivering this message. It's almost like I don't even want, I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be delivering these messages. Um, 
because I feel like there's going to be a big reaction and it's like, I, I so I just want to, I'm going to deliver the message and then I'm just going to step out of it. I might not even read the comments. So basically, even if those kinds of questions come up about, is this a trick? We've been forewarned to watch for exactly this type of scenario you have to also then flip that again and say, but is that because they want whoever, you know, the, the dark magicians are, the sorcerers, the darker energy at play here, they knew that something miraculous was to occur. And so they embedded it in, they embedded doubt in our, in our beings, right? Perhaps, who knows? It's like, we will discover it as we walk through it. I'm coming back to these drafts here as this kind of like falling into alignment with, with um, energies that feel right to you as it's like it, you're going to arrive there as you're meant to and it will just be graceful and elegant and you will know. It won't be jarring and choppy. It will be more of a flow energy. But the rattle is talking about that that this energy is is a bit rattle it's it's going to stir things up it's a rattle energy it's like it's it's kind of um it's beginning well it, but it's also the beginning okay so i've been getting this stuff about a lot of heart rate increase a lot of heart activation a heart activity even if your heart begins to speed up because of a nervousness or an anxiety what that does in the bigger context is that it brings awareness to the heart. Even if it's initially um, a discomfort or an uncertainty energy, right? So it's like the rat, it's almost like all the heart rates, the heart rates are increasing. Everybody's heart is, is beating a little more as this occurs, right? But it's also like, that's the beginning. That's the beginning, uh, like the collective's heart interestingly is kind of going into sync with these drafts right this kind of elegant merging of because they're okay the thing about the rattle is that if we all kind of pick up a rattle or a drum and begin beating it what happens is that we all kind of end up beating our drums in unison with each other right? it becomes like a, a rhythmic energy that is actually very profound and so it's almost like all of this that is unfolding is leading to this rise of the collective heartbeat that is the beginning of something. It's just the be so these guys, whoever whoever the dragonfly collective is, that's kind of showing itself in this really otherworldly, like right up front and in, in in the center stage. It's just the beginning it's like that's not the main event that's the thing it's like they're just opening the door or they're just getting the unison they're getting the hearts in unison for for what is next and it has something to do with this the roots okay the roots coming up the serpent the serpent rising which I, like i said it could be could be the beginning of a, a collective kundalini type of experience i don't know but okay i'm going to continue to pull cards and Create and extend it. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. If not, I will see you next time. Thank you.